I think a lot of times I'm asked by folks, will the teachers trust a video centric process? And, uh, you know, I say back and uh, I, you know, I think it's true that a lot of the trust is, of course, how video is positioned um, within the organization and how it's used. But I'm, I'm really curious from your perspective as a researcher, you know, are there, are there any things that we know uh, beyond anecdotally around using a virtual coaching process, using, you know, asynchronous coaching, whatever you want to call it, uh, and whether or not we get the same types of uh, benefits with teachers, does it erode their trust? Th those, you know, that kind of entangled set of questions, because obviously trust is needed in a coaching relationship to actually get the, uh, you know, to have a fruitful conversation. Well, um, when we first started this out, that group I work with, they were from Beaverton, Oregon, and uh, we gave them all the flip cameras, and then we decided to make flip camera a part of the coaching. They all asked people, and they all agreed to do it, and then I would start to present and share the information around the country, and um, people always raised their hand, and they said, how did you get the teachers to do it? So I went back and asked the coaches, and they said, we just asked, and they said yes. And I said, well, thanks for nothing. And then, um, and then they said, um, they, I said, well, why did they say yes? And they said, the reason they said yes is because they trusted us. And they said, if somebody doesn't want to use video, it's probably not about the camera. It's probably about the absence of trust. And so if trust isn't in place, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. And what I see in my experience, this is anecdotal, but what I see is um, it varies more from, and I'm curious to see if your experience is the same, but it varies more from school to school than it does person to person. You have a whole school where almost everybody's on board and they don't have any issues. And you'll have another school, well, maybe one or two people will do it, but most people don't want to do it. And the issue there is trust. Do they trust or don't they trust? Do they feel it's trusted? So in the Better Conversations book, I talk about five factors for trust. So I'll just mention them really quickly. Uh, one of them is character. If you want me to trust you, I have to believe you're telling me the truth. And I think that although my uh, focus is on individual conversations, that could be an organizational situation truth. I need to know that what people tell me is the truth. And my belief is the person who's recorded owns the video. And it shouldn't go anywhere else unless they get permission. And, and, but if people feel, I don't know where that video is going to go, who's going to see it, what's going to I mean, their first question always is, who's going to see the video? So if they know that they can trust this person to treat them with character and let them own the video, then that's not going to be a problem. I just went to see Star Wars last night. Um, and I know I'm kind of behind the thing. Uh, it's like about time to see it, but you know, I had tickets for the opening night. But I missed it. So I went last night, and there's this point where Han Solo says to the young hero, look, you're not telling the truth, and women will always find out when you're not telling the truth. And I think the truth is everybody finds out when you don't tell the truth. If you're, if you're dishonest, people won't trust you. Eventually, they will figure it out. So character has to be in place, character individually, but probably character organizationally. And then whoever's using it, if they're competent in what they do, if we know that this person can help me, we're going to increase our trust. So if I have an instructional coach, for example, who understands a good coaching process and has good teaching practices, that's going to be helpful. And then if they're reliable, if they do what they said, this is where the technology can be really helpful. Because if the technology doesn't work and people are wasting time, they'll stop doing it. But if the technology delivers and helps people do what they said they're going to do, it's going to make a big difference. And then warmth encourages trust where people feel um, this person is warm-hearted towards me. And last thing is that I feel this person is a steward towards me. That is to say, um, <clears throat> they're benevolent. <clears throat> or another way to put it, as somebody said in my interviews, um, I just have to know that person's not going to screw me over. So if I know this person is has my best interest at heart, they treat me with warmth and kindness, they're competent, reliable, and they have character. I'm going to trust them. And the same things probably happen at the organizational level. So if that's not in place organizationally, this is going to sound really self-serving, but I don't mean it to. But I really think they need to tackle something like better conversations where they say, let's make sure we have organizational trust in place so we have a setting where this can, this can actually happen. Because if it's a toxic environment, it's going to be hard for coaching to really, or excuse me, it's going to be hard for video really to make a big difference. Uh, all right, so uh, I, I wanted to react to that. Two things that um, you know definitely want to confirm. I mean, I would agree that we see 
a difference from organization to organization. And generally, you know, the, uh, the kind of not attitude, but, you know, kind of uh, response that we'll get back from users at various organizations when we ask for feedback, you know, if it's, it's generally all really positive or you go to other organizations and uh, some of the uh, opportunities for improvement actually don't relate to Athena and more relate to the process around uh, how video has been implemented or used. And uh, certainly then we, you know, use that to, to help those organizations. The other thing that stuck out to me um, that that really resonated it was an early decision we made in our platform, uh, and uh, great to hear that it it's feels central to you. Is in our platform when the teachers record the video and then they upload it, it defaults to private, and no one can see it until they share the video. And then, uh, depending on how they share it, they can pull it back at any time. Uh, so really interesting for me to hear that that was kind of at the top of your list. Uh, and from our perspective, that was in some ways at the top of our list from the, the designing of, of the platform uh, a long time ago, uh, back at the beginning. Uh, all right, well, uh, I know uh, you have some other things to attend to today. I would love to keep chatting, and uh, as we both know, we like, like chatting, but uh, I'll let you go, and we'll wrap it up for here, and really appreciate the time, Jim. It was great to, to get some reflex reflections from you, and really excited to uh, share them with uh, everyone on the internet, you know, recorded video. Now they can watch it anytime, anywhere, right? Thanks a lot, Adam. It's a pleasure and um, good luck. I think you're doing great work. It's, I'm grateful for the invitation.